Welcome back to Twist of Fate, a small business podcast where we're going to help you find your inspiration to make your dreams come true, building a plan forward as an entrepreneur with passion, optimism, and planning. Today, we're going to talk about a fun topic. You see, my mother always used to make comments to me with all of my academic skills. All work and no play, Doug, will make you a dull boy. And that's my lesson to many of you already that, look, you're working hard in your day job. You're working hard as an entrepreneur, but you need to have fun. And one way to do it, food and wine, of course. So today's guest is doing a special thing of bringing together the greatness that we love of food and the great things we love about wine and she has created a concept, Pair Anything. Christy, my friend, welcome to Twist of Fate. Thank you, Doug. I'm so happy to be here and have an opportunity to talk about what I'm most passionate about, like you said, food and wine. Oh, man. Now, this is an episode of my heart. So why don't you tell our guests a little bit about Pair Anything? Like, it's a very cool concept. I've been, I'm a fan. I've been watching. So why don't you tell the, my guests about that? Pair Anything is quite personal to me because I was inspired by my own culture. Um, I'm Filipina and food, hey, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, food enjoyment is very near and dear um, to our culture. And when I was um, at my parents' house, I, my mom was making chicken adobo, one of my favorite Filipino dishes. And a random question came to my mind, like what wine pairs with chicken adobo? And I couldn't. Interesting. And I couldn't figure it out. I, I googled it. What would you normally drink with chicken adobo? It, 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 without thinking of this question. Um, San Miguel beer. Ah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Just because that's what's um, common. It's you know it's local um, to the Philippines. Um, so I figured, why not pair wine with Filipino food? In fact, why not pair it with Vietnamese? Mexican, mm. Thai. Mm. Now, all these cuisines um, are, I would say, not known to be paired with wine, mm -hmm. but there's no reason why it cannot. And so, me. You know, I'm used to, yeah. as a food and beverage connoisseur, you hear about pairing wines with cheese yes. or olives or. European based cuisine. Exactly. Right? Fish, yes. steak, but you're right. Yes. I never would have thought. You know, when I'm having Filipino food, well, what do I pair it with? I think it's a brilliant idea. It's a big problem. That's a that's a real problem. It, it's a real problem, and it's an enjoyment challenge, right? <laughs> and so, um, what I wanted to do was use my technology background, combine it with my passion, like you. Mm -hmm. I'm like you. Mm -hmm. You know, being a foodie, and why not elevate? enjoyment wherever food meets beverage, right? Starting with wine, because it's the most complex. And that's what I did. You know, so taking, Bravo. taking some inspiration, and now um, that is my mission, is, is to be able to create enjoyment experiences. And we do that through this, this app that's available for everyone, yet it's also available for businesses who want to reach out to more diverse consumers. Sure. Did you come up with the name Pair Anything? Well, yes, and, and it was because I wanted to pair with Filipino food, Vietnamese, and Thai, and I figured it should really be able to pair with anything. And that's how I came up with the name, Pair Anything. That's great. So it wasn't, it wasn't anything that I thought about it, it just came naturally to me. Mm. So, how many different foods does your app support in terms of pairing with wine? What a great question. Um, we truly live up to the name. We can pair any dish from any cuisine. That is kind of like our secret sauce. Really? So imagine for um, a winery or uh -huh. anybody in the retail or restaurant industry, you can connect what you offer mm. to different cuisines and, and, and really different um, consumers from mm. different backgrounds. Somebody like me from a non-wine culture can now appreciate wine because now I have pair anything. What do you mean non-wine culture? You know how to have a you know how to have a good time. I, yes, I, I mean, don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that. You know, uh, growing up in America, you know, being multicultural, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and in fact, uh, in my past world, you know, in technology, I, I traveled to fifty plus countries. Oh wow! So I, I got an exposure uh, to many different um, peoples and cultures, and an appreciation for what they offer. Mm -hmm. Yet, with my background, you know 
my cultural background, you know, Filipinos are not known to drink wine, you know, traditionally. Yet I shouldn't be precluded and I shouldn't feel intimidated when mm -hmm. I go to the winery. I shouldn't. You be, felt that way? Oh, for, for sure. I mean, there's many times when I would go to a fine dining restaurant and there's, you know, the traditional, the stereotypical um, type who would feel like they have more knowledge, um, more experience in, in wine. And to me... I think everybody feels that way. Yeah, and, 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 and if, if at you look... At first. At first, right? And, and, and I, I never want to feel intimidated or have anyone else feel intimidated just because they didn't have that lack of knowledge or opportunity to discover. Sure. Because once you start experimenting, trying different dishes with different wines, you get to develop your own palate, right? 100%. And, and that's all that matters, right? Mm. It doesn't matter what a trained sommelier may think pairs with that. It's just a guidance. All that matters is your taste preferences. And because Doug, you and I, we grew up in, you know, in, in, a, in a, uh, you know, certain parts of the country. Uh, we had an opportunity to try different foods. That makes up our taste profile. It does. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what somebody would may recommend that goes well with, um, you know, let's say spaghetti, you know, carbonara, you may like a certain type of wine versus I may like a certain type of wine as well, based mm -hmm. on our unique differences. And so pair anything, not only are we able to take the components of the dish, match it to the profile of the wines. Components. So components, that means yes. different food types and different cooking styles. Yes. You could do, you could do either one. Right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and this, our secret sauce is the ability to be able to crowdsource um, inputs from restaurants, from wineries, from, you know, like recipes from all these databases mm -hmm. and the more we the more people use it the more we're able to add uh, to our database mm -hmm. the the better it gets mm -hmm. right and so we are living um we are um fulfilling our mission of being able to pair anything and providing unlimited pairing possibilities okay <laughs> Okay, so I, I want to tell you a story why what you're telling means so much to me. The first time, I, I, so I moved to Bay Area maybe 2010, okay. okay, and I had a friend, his name's Nick, that we decided to take a trip up to Napa Valley. At that time, I was a Belgian beer drinker. Nice. I was a foodie, but I, I definitely didn't cook like I do now. Like right now, I would definitely say, like I deep fry. I wanna fry. come to your. <laughs> oh yeah, I deep fry, I sous vide, I, I can smoke, like I can go, like I can really go. Like I-, I You're a master. Over. So, but then not so much. So we went to a little vineyard mm -hmm. called Behringer, oh, which yes. is not that little, actually, right. that's a joke. And Behringer, uh, let's just say this, I experienced what you said. I was intimidated and I am, um, you know, my parents were from the south. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the north, but we are like, you know, God-fearing Christian black family, right? So we drink wine, but it's not like I understood like there's Chardonnay and Merlot and all these different things. There was a brilliant guy that still works at that Behringer. I still see him oh, there. He gave me like this food wheel. Yes. And it had on there like certain cheese, certain things on how your taste buds on your tongue could interpret flavor. Right. And let me tell you, that iconic moment, that wheel, me and Nick took that and it changed everything on how I interpret wine wow. and food interrelated. Exactly. So this is why when what you're telling me is, you just created the next best thing. Like I lost that wheel. And every time I would go and drink wine and didn't have that wheel, I would be upset. Now I can use this little app. <laughs> exactly. I'll never lose it. Like, like, do you understand how many people probably can relate to this food challenge that you call it? It makes me so happy that anyone can have access to something that will let them enjoy more, yeah. right? And they can have it anywhere, yeah. you know. So, and I, I'm happy to hear that experience because that, that also was kind of why I got into it. Besides graduating from UC Davis and being around people from winery families. Um, Which, yeah, there's wine country all around there. It's all around there. And, and, and growing up in California. But, but you didn't yeah. drink any other wine. 
<laughs> no, no, I, it wasn't until I went to college, um, and that's the truth, <laughs> that uh, I got UC exposed. Davis. UC Davis. Um, Great school, by the way. Congrats. Th thank you so much. And, cool. and what's nice about that is, is that I came back to Davis, the city of Davis, to actually start pair anything. So it was all very um, serendipitous. But what's nice about um, going to Davis is that we were, I was around a lot of people that mm -hmm. were, had a connection to the vit viticulture and enology program. And there's a lot of ag tech. There's a lot of, there's a tech, lot of innovation, right. innovation there. Going and and on so that this. was kind of inspiring because I got my, my first taste of the food and wine pairing concept. And then I carried it out throughout my careers, you know, uh, wherever I, I, I traveled, I was able to taste the wines from that region. And people are so proud of what is grown from their region. And it does make sense that foods mm -hmm. that grew up with the wines go well together. Yet, if you are in another part of the world, we may not have that same opportunity to try. And so that's the reason why bringing technology to take in all this immense knowledge and making it available in a very convenient way is a way to open up the world of wine to more people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love it, love it. Here, here, I, I want to ask you some things. So, so first of all, this is your first entrepreneurial venture, correct? It's actually, surprisingly, my fifth. Okay, okay. <laughs> You're a serial entrepreneur. That's great. Uh, yes, and I, and I would say there's a lot of you know trials and tribulations. Um, I would say not all of them were successes. Yet in terms of learnings, immensely successful. Yeah, I was gonna say it de depends on how you define success. Yes. In fact, that's my comment to many listeners right away. All of you want to be entrepreneurs, and I get it. All of you want to make money, but the truth is. The entrepreneur's journey is really more about solving problems and learning and fixing. And the more you fail, fix, the better you're gonna be. You have to fail, um, otherwise you don't know what you're doing is right uh, and, 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 and really solving a problem. Because if you're doing things um, that seem easy then you're not really solving a big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to approach a problem that it's too hairy and too complicated and no one's ever attempted to do it before, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. what makes you know, um, an entrepreneur successful because they're fearless in going after a problem. Now imagine you know, when I graduated from college, if I said that I was gonna do this, I didn't have um, all the life learnings, um, all, all the exposures to different cultures to actually, you know, yeah. Incubate an idea like this. Yeah, yeah. So you feel that your travels and experiences in life, you know, kind For of sure. like fine wine, right? Like it, 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 it matured, it got better over time, yeah. right? And, and working in technology in Silicon Valley for all these years um, gave me a, a very good foundation sure. to use um, technology to solve a problem, mm. something that I'm passionate about. Mm. Um, so, so things happen at the right time in your life. Mm. It's just, you have to be open-minded to when you see a problem, is it calling you to solve it, mm. right? And everyone, Listen, yeah. I'm proud of you. Fist bump to you, because let <laughs> yes. me say something. So you're you're Filipina. You're a female in business. You're a former executive, and you are a very innovative entrepreneur. And my compliments. Part of the reason that I really want to bring you here today, I respect you so much because I've seen you give talks. I've seen you win pitch competitions, but you're still having fun. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do anything in life unless um, you're enjoying yourself and you're co-creating with people. Hmm. Um, and, and, and I think I'm even more committed to doing that because of the way this journey has unfolded, right? Just to give you a little bit of a backdrop is when I won the pitch competition, it was the UC Davis business competition, I won $10,000. That was my seed money to build a prototype and then some businesses approached me because they wanted to do something. And by the way, that's a solid win, by the way. Like yeah. the, some of the top companies in Sacramento For win sure. that competition. So, I mean, don't be humble. Like, you know, <laughs> hey, you, you, you know, that's a good one. And it's nice because that's my alma mater. So it, it, it does give me immense pride. Uh, so when I won, I, 
I was able to have that seed money. Anyone, anytime that someone gives you money for an idea, it's, 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 it's a true validation. Mm -hmm. And so when I launched the following year, March of 2020, um, I was so happy. However, it was during the pandemic, pandemic. just started, lockdown and all that stuff. And so an entrepreneur, you have to be agile and you have to, you know, figure out what your path forward is. The good news is we had pilot customers that paid us. They gave us money even before it was built to co-innovate with us. Mm -hmm. So I was very motivated. So when I launched, I was an all-time high. And then, unexpectedly... Uh, I mean, let me tell you something. Your product market fit... <laughs> I don't care whether there's a COVID lockdown or not. People need food and booze. Like, For that's sure. all there is to it. Like, <laughs> well, that's the that's <laughs> great motivator is that you knew that people wanted an escape. They needed something... Uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to connect them to something that brings enjoyment. And, and so I was very, very motivated and I was very um, committed because I had paying customers that believed in us. Now, imagine two months later, I went from an all-time high to an all-time low mm. because my mom, who was my inspiration uh, for Pair Anything, unexpectedly passed. Oh. Yeah. And and so when you think about you know this entrepreneurial journey and the the trials and tribulations, you have to kind of look into yourself. Well, why are you doing this, right? Mm -hmm. What's what's your why? Mm -hmm. And my why is that look, I want to create enjoyment, as I mentioned, wherever food meets um, beverage. And the reason why is, is I want to be able to help people eat well and be able to live happier lives, and so. When that happened, I'm, I was a little bit, um, I had to take, take a step back mm -hmm. and then recommit to my purpose. And now that I reflect back, I have this amazing innovation that came from me, inspired by my mom. I was going to say that. She was yeah. part of the, what inspired it. And it's sure. part of the origin story. And I can look into my app even today and type in chicken adobo. And that will remind me of her. And so it, it's, it's, it's amazing how something mm. that I created um, brought her joy. It really is what inspires me to keep moving forward in this journey. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, to my listeners, um, I feel like the greatest entrepreneurs sit in a place of both pleasure and pain. Mm. And I feel like yeah. by your twist of fate being one your mother inspiring but then in losing her but you still found a way forward and i think i mean she would be proud to see who you've become and how you've been resilient and and still innovated so i look kudos to you that touches my heart that you say that <laughs> mm -hmm. i get it no i i earlier episodes i've talked about the passing of my father mm -hmm. it was my call to action to start a business Founded on not the concept of, look, I would say prior to me becoming a father, mm -hmm. a husband, and before my father died, there's no doubt about it. My career was motivated on revenge. It was a revenge tale of the little kid from Cleveland uh, that would try to do the impossible. Every time I'm told, you can't do that. The naysayers are lining up. You know, you can't do that. But when you keep doing it, it would motivate me. But I'm not motivated that way after my father died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... It became about legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think listening to you, your culture, my culture, that's something we have in common. <laughs> you like that. We, that's something that no, we I, have I, in common. I, I feel this kinship. And it's interesting when you say that you were motivated initially by revenge. Recently, you know, going through um, a couple of accelerators, one thing I learned is start imagining the opposite, mm. right? Imagine that mm. it's not hard. Mm. Imagine that there's people that want you to succeed. Imagine mm -hmm. that it's easy. And that's what I actually did. You know, after my mom passed, I took myself out of bed and just tried to imagine the opposite. You know, what, what today, that day can be. Mm. And then you just, you know, approach it from one day at a time. I think that's great. Could we talk a little bit about Accelerator? So yes. to my aspiring entrepreneurs, you don't know, there's truth in what Chrissy's saying that you may feel 
that you don't have enough money or there's too many barriers or so many challenges, but there are organizations or groups, third party, that their whole business model is to help you refine your business plan, to help you find money, to help you along the way. And you've done, you've worked with some great accelerators. Do you mind telling me? Yes, um, one of the first ones, uh, it's actually um, my first community when I moved back to Sacramento area is the Sacramento Entrepreneurship Academy. That's great. Was this? This was like, while I was in college. Uh, gotcha. It's the first uh, program in Sacramento. I'm a founding fellow. And that Hold gave on. me my initial foundation. So. Mm. Um, I ended up working for large companies, but even then that entrepreneurial mindset was already um, incubating mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. me. And so I became an entrepreneur. That's an entrepreneur inside an organization. And that's why throughout my career, and I could say that I've had you know five startup experiences because that's the same mindset that I brought to each um, sure, opportunity. Sure. And then, uh, um, so, so when I wanted to figure out my path forward, I joined, this amazing um, accelerator uh, dedicated to helping women-led tech businesses, the fourth wave. Yeah, and yeah. I'm definitely aware of that. Phenomenal, and, 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 and they're really um, helpful in scaling, not just your venture, but you as an entrepreneur and, and scaling you to be a conscious leader. Mm -hmm. I sense that you take the responsibility seriously, that you're not just an innovator, you're a female business leader that will inspire other women to do the courageous act to start something. Yes. And, and I've always put myself out there and it's, it's a vulnerable situation, especially when you're pitching your idea that's based on a personal, um, you know, inspiration. Mm. And I, I do it because I know that it can help someone say, look, if she can do it, then I can. Correct. Do it. Correct. And even though I, I, I uh, get mentored and get advice from people like Doug, you know, and, and others, but I also pass that along to, to other startup sure. founders and also um, mentor them and advise them. And in some cases, I also invest in their ideas. Um, I think we all rise, you know, by helping others, right? I mean, you can't do it alone. And I've been very fortunate to have great um, people around me, both mentors and teammates. I, I want people to thrive. That's what it's all about. And by, by doing so, is, I think is providing yourself as a resource to others. Mm -hmm. And I take inspiration mm -hmm. from you because mm -hmm. um, you do that so well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what, I'm all about giving back. Like yeah. it just is what it is. Like the, it's a, it's a fundamentally built into my DNA yes. to cooperate, mm -hmm. not to compete. Right. But again, that's the new dog. <laughs> it used to be like that. You know, cooperate, share, sure. um, defend. Um, that is just in my nature. And, and you know, I sense that in you too. So that's fourth wave. What other ones? You've done some. Yes. Really oh, uh, and then uh, getting back again to, to the UC um, re immense resources. I participated in the UC launch. Um, it's the number one accelerator for anyone affiliated with the University of California. And um, I was able to um, participate outside of California, this nonprofit uh, accelerator based in Dallas called Impact Ventures. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. And that's, I'm definitely familiar with them. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, really amazing group. And you know, their, their motto of accelerating all shades of genius, mm -hmm. right? It really touched a core to me. And it, it was just nice to also um, take yourself out of this California innovation mindset and see what else is happening in mm -hmm. other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And I, I love being exposed um, to a new geography, but also a, a different community, mm -hmm. right? Different network. And so you, you as an entrepreneur, you want to look for um, where are your areas for development mm -hmm. and where are the resources and network that can help you get there. And believe me, there, there's plenty out there. All you have to do is ask and then you apply yourself. And it's really a matter of commitment because those networks, those accelerators are investing in you. Mm -hmm. And so the best that you could do is maximize that investment, right? Mm -hmm. So that it pays dividends and so that um, it expands um, that network, strengthens the community. And then you end up becoming, you know, somebody else's, you know, mentor and sure. you pull somebody up. 
And, and that's the beauty, I think, of being in the entrepreneurial you know, community, because there's a lot of collaboration that, mm -hmm. that happens. So let me ask you, what does success look like for you now? Like you've accomplished a lot of things already. What is, where is Pair, where do you want to take Pair anything? Like, what, like how big do you want this to go? Well, it's going to be huge, right? Just because it's growing organically. And success to me means that we're able to not just create a change in the world in terms of creating enjoyment, but it's also the change that happens within, hmm. right? Hmm. As I continue to grow personally and professionally, I'm able to take my own growth and be able to apply it for, for, the other, for everyone's benefit to be of service to others. That's, that's success to me. Mm -hmm. and, and the financial part will be a byproduct because if you're solving a problem, somebody's gonna want it, right? Yet, it's not like I'm selling anything. I'm just here to help you, mm -hmm. right? And that is like the true meaning of success is that you're able to provide a service for someone in need. Yeah, and I think you found an interesting place that to be honest with you, it's you're kind of like the Rosetta Stone for someone seeking food and beverage entertainment. Because to me, you're kind of breaking the code of like, that food goes with that drink or that thing you should really do. And that's gonna to lead to product sales, believe that. So other, the, I mean, I'm sure you're partnering with a lot of organizations, you yes. should be, because they're, you're helping to connect the dots for them. I like that analogy and I'll keep that in mind. You should use it, you should use it. I mean, and it's uh, that That actually points to, um, another layer of pair anything. Not only are we um, pairing food with beverage, starting with wine, but we're also connecting synergistic businesses, right? 100%. So somebody in the food business, whether it's a restaurant or a private chef marketplace, um, because we have a recent partnership with Foodum, um, based uh, in three markets, San Francisco, um, Sacramento, and LA, we were able to connect Foodum with one of the wineries in our portfolio. Now, without Pair Anything, I don't think these two businesses would have ever sure. connected. Nope. So now we're able to do that. So imagine the potential of connecting more businesses. It could be um, the mm -hmm. food delivery service, mm -hmm. right? Um, restaurants having more access to local wineries, for, for example. Like you, you uh, in my understanding, you partner with Foodum. Yes. Correct, I saw I saw this, yeah. I saw this. A and, uh, and it Foodum, was we love you. <laughs> What's nice about that, we have three California-based female founders coming together, right? Making the world a tastier place. So that's place. you, Renata, and... And Jenna Harvey, who is the president of Scott Harvey Wines. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. All three amazing yes. people. <laughs> amazing people. Now, let, let me ask you a, a personal question. Especially we're talking about pair anything. What's your favorite food? And your favorite wine? In my heart, I would say it's always chicken adobo. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. Yeah. And it's probably, I'm going to be honest here, the only Filipino dish that I know how to make. <laughs> uh, so that, and then for my wine, um, it's, a, it's a wine that seems to me could be better appreciated by, by everyone just because it's so food friendly. Riesling. Oh, yeah. Is, um, oh, yeah. Sweet. You can, you can actually find a dry Riesling. Oh, really? Um, Favorite maker for the Riesling? Well, um, the, the, the Rieslings come from um, Germany, so I, I do like German Rieslings. But what's nice is California um, and Washington wineries do make a nice um, dry Riesling mm. that I would recommend. And, and that goes well, um, I would say, with a lot of Asian cuisines. Gotcha. So you have to tell me now. My turn, right? My turn, right? Okay, I, I'm, bring it on. Bring it on. It's seafood boil, Ooh. which I'm sure you've had. Mm -hmm. So seafood boil with Quantum, which is Behringer's red blend. Oh, that's Do you just, know what's the varietal? Look, I'm not working if I'm having that. Like if, 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 if I have <laughs> seafood boil, oh, uh, I don't know. But see, Quantum, they, they issue a new one every year. I see. So yeah. each year the flavors change. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's a Knights Valley, but I'm not sure. I have to go check that out. But I have tons and tons of bottles of it. They also had a 2018 Chardonnay that is the most buttery wine I've ever had. 
Yeah, Chardonnay, you know, people have the, the different perspectives. You know, some people love it, some people do not. Um, some people like it on the buttery side. And Correct. Some My people like wife it on the stainless steel. Um, loves it. Very clean taste to it. I love it buttery. Yeah. So much so that, I mean, I can tell my listeners for the first time, I'm making my own first gallon of wine. Imagine that. So I started growing grapes four years ago in my backyard. And I How had... exciting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For It was for Labor Day. Mm -hmm. I brought my sons out. And we picked the grapes, crushed the grapes, grinded the grapes, and we started fermenting the grapes maybe the next day. And will you make it in the style that you like? More on the, the buttery oak Oof. side? Oof. Okay, so I started with a glass container for fermentation. Mm -hmm. I did not want to go to... I thought about adding wood chips, mm -hmm. but I'd rather get the basics down. Right. And then I'm going to expand from there. Yes. Uh, when will the first vintage be released? I have two more weeks that I want to wait. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bottle cork and then I'm going to at least wait for the spring. Nice. And then, um, well, I don't want to, I don't want to slip on a secret that I have. <laughs> I'm doing something related to the wine industry that later on we'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to disclose it yet, but I'm definitely up to something. I think all entrepreneurs are right. Like, we, like you mentioned, we're all kind of like constantly yes. rapidly thinking of Absolutely. problems to solve. Right? As, as you should, right. I think that's how you should approach life is always constantly, you know, trying to figure out what else you can do. All your immense gifts hmm. and talents. How else can you apply it? I agree. I agree. That's how we make the world a better place. So pair anything. So, any of my listeners can download the app today. It's available now, right? Yes, and the beauty of it is you don't have to download it. We make it so easy that you just have to go to app.pairanything.com. Mm. So any browser, you can access it. Mm. And why we did it that way is that um, when we were doing our initial um, testing, some people, um, the older generation were hesitant to download an app. Sure. There's so many apps out there. And so we want to make sure that it's accessible for all. The good news is that now that it's available, um, you can go on our website, you know, um, www.pairanything.com, and you can just click on Start Pairing, and that will get you access um, to the app. And then last year, we started um, creating a widget so that we can reside inside other online and mobile experiences. Sure. And so now you can also find us on the winery's website under the Food Pairing page we would have our parenting app right there. Mm. And the difference uh, with that app is that we would recommend wines sold by that winery. Mm. So we make that connection even um, better because you could type in any dish from any cuisine and get a, a wine recommendation. And when you're inside the winery's website, you get a wine recommendation from that winery. Mm. And so that's the value that we bring to the consumers but also to the businesses. Again, product market fit, you nailed it. I think you have definitely are just so proud. <laughs> and I've seen you in action, you're, you're an inspiration. Um, I think not just to women, even to me. Like I, I really salute you um, for everything you're doing. Now, if any of my listeners want to get in touch with you, how would, how would they do that? Yes, uh, anyone can reach out to me. Uh, you can email me uh, if you wish, uh, hello at pairanything.com. You can follow us on Instagram at pairanything. And uh, you know, please try our app and we welcome your, your feedback. We're doing some exciting things now with restaurants and soon um, in some of, the, some of your favorite retailers, you may see us um, on, on, on your aisle um, to be able to recommend wines that you could take home with you. That's awesome. And Chrissy, are you raising funds right now? Or Yes, uh, we started our, fu our fundraising um, just in January. We felt that we were at the stage that we understand our business model. Uh, we have a pre-seed uh, round open right now. Um, it's five hundred thousand um, dollars. I'm happy to say that we have forty percent committed already. Hey, all right. And I welcome other partners uh, who would love to join me on this journey. 
That's great. So if any of our listeners are there, look, get off the bench and in the game. Start pairing your food and wines with Christie's app. And also, if you're an investor and you're looking for a great new opportunity, which, you know, I'm, I'm going to definitely use your product because like I just told you, I lost that wheel years ago. Right. Like, don't <laughs> get me wrong. Replace that. <laughs> I'm experienced now. Like uh, I'm not lost when I'm in a vineyard. So uh, I am a member of Behringer, mm -hmm. Prisoner. There's a couple in Russian River that I, in, in Sacramento, I believe it's uh, Elevation 10. Yes, Elevation 10. Uh, yeah, see, see, I'm telling you, look, I, I, I'm converted, you know. But the pairing with food is really cool. So my thought to many of you is my final reflection. Again, I go back to it's okay to play, to live your life, and to be happy. But the most important thing I think that I see here from listening to Christy's story is that you will face success and failure with your chin held high. That's what I see here. You know, whether it's about loss, whether it's about gain, whether it's about winning awards, whether it's about struggle, you have to keep smiling. And that's what I've learned from you, my friends. So thank you for coming to Twist of Faith. This is a great, great, great you, session to talk with you. You honor me. Thank you so much, Doug. I'm forever grateful. Okay, if you like this content, please like, share, subscribe. It really helps us out. Again, we're trying to inspire you to find your own Twist of Faith. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Twist of Fate is hosted by Doug Younger. It's produced by John Lundford and Matthew Brown at Ezo Creative. Moni Yu designs our graphics and Enrique Pimentel manages our digital life. Our theme music is by Jamie Bathgate. Special thanks to all of our patrons. You can support the show by visiting patreon.com slash twist of fate podcast. Thanks for listening. <laughs>